The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So, visit FanDuel.com slash 247 and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, permitted parishes only, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, or Wyoming. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia or call one 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York or visit oasas.ny.gov slash gambling. Standard text messaging rates apply. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Utah, and other states where prohibited. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Podcast. Now, here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to the Insiders. It's the PowerCat Insiders Podcast brought to you by Blue Mark Energy. Does your company or your employer spend 4000 or more a year on energy bills? Would you like to reduce those costs by 25% or more and maintain the same level of service and reliability? If so, it's time to speak with Blue Mark Energy. Blue Mark Energy, K-State owned and K-State proud. Tim Fitzgerald, Matt Walters, Travis Tannehill, and Ryan Black. The whole crew is on hand to sum up the disaster in Morgantown. The defeat of the Wildcats. The first Big 12 loss of the season for Kansas State. It drops to 4-1 and one on the season after that 37-10 to 10 debacle against the Mountaineers. And let's just dive right in. Matt Walters as part of the radio broadcast you were there man uh that is the best west virginia's played this season and they just left kansas state out of sorts the entire game well i would use the word debacle with ku football i don't i I would just call it a i would just call it a you know case they got whipped It, it was that simple it's you know it happens every so often uh you know west virginia we i think we all knew going in was going to be a difficult opponent they're athletic their their defense was the best defense K-State has seen this year. It's better than TCU's. It's better than Oklahoma's. But, you know, K-State had opportunities in the first quarter and did not take advantage of them and, you know, made some mistakes. And then once West Virginia got rolling, I mean, K-State didn't have A.J. Parker on the defensive side. And not that that would have completely changed the complexion of the game. But, you know, it's, it's kind of a beat-up football team right now. And, once things got rolling with West Virginia, Jared Daigie made plays again, and Letty Brown was Letty Brown, and uh, they're good. I, w- I was impressed. That's a that's a salty West Virginia bunch. Ryan Black, what were you thinking as you watched Kansas State just really melt in the face of West Virginia's pressure? They kept, they just kind of kept K State at bay the whole day. Well, um, I thought that it shows you know these people who set odds know more than than I do for sure because I, I thought. K State would pull out a close victory, uh, and again, I could even see you know West Virginia winning. Uh, you know, I think the final line was four and a half. Maybe you guys, maybe I'm wrong on that, but 
Um, I, I just did not expect that kind of game. I, I did not expect K State would get would get blown out in that manner. But I will say that, um, not that you know, guys, that K State was was you know, succeeding behind smoke and mirrors. But, you know, let's be honest, at least in the wins that they've had, you know, it's not like the offense has been going out there and scoring eight touchdowns. You know I mean? And they've, they've been able to get pick sixes and they've returned punts for touchdowns. You know, and I, and I think, you know, Saturday was just – that was far and away the best defense they had come up against. And, and, and you know, with a quarterback playing only his sixth career game in the college level, I think that's maybe to be expected, you know, how he played. But, you know, I'm not uh, – I'm not saying that I think – this is going to totally derail K State season by any stretch, but they certainly don't get a breather Saturday when Oklahoma State comes to town. Let's turn to our old broken down tight end now, Travis. <laughs> um, anytime you're in a team dynamic, there's some games where you can just feel the buzz in the locker room, on the sidelines. Everyone's just kind of humming along, locked in on the task. And then there's days when it just flat. You're flat, the guys around you are flat, and you don't know why. You can't explain it. That's the way it looked like to me. Kansas State just wasn't emotionally invested in that game, and it's hard to explain, but it's it's what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, initially just from that first quarter, things just didn't get off to a to a great start. And, you know, the early turnovers, I think, kind of maybe messed with the with the mental side of, of a young a young quarterback and Will Howard. And uh, I mean, really, I mean I always felt like most of the time the guys were, were ready to play, but just in, in it, when I was playing, you know, we were always ready, but sometimes just the, it just seemed like the play calls just didn't work. It's like, well, I blocked my guy. You blocked your guy. You come back to the sideline. It's like, Hey, everyone did their assignment. What, what's, well, why, why did we get no yards? Why did we get two yards? Why, why were we having three and out? So um, when that, when that starts happening, that's not a good sign. Cause that just means, um, you know, you're doing everything you're asked and you, you're just going up against guys that are better than you. And everyone's, everyone's covering up their guys, but no one's really winning or we're all just kind of stalemating. Um, and that's kind of what it seemed like on the offensive side. I mean, there were some, some missed assignments and, um, some missed blocks, but overall, um, you know, I just think like coach Kleiman said, I mean, they just got to find a way to play better. They, they just were not good enough. Um, I felt like that West Virginia defense really frustrated, uh, that offense and at the end of the day, they either got to find a way to get better, recruit better. Because um, you know, I just think across the across the board that West Virginia defense was better than that K State offense. Yeah, it really was, Matt. Um, with an inexperienced offensive line that's still kind of finding its way this season, uh, West Virginia just kind of overwhelmed the Cats at the point of attack. I mean, that front four for West Virginia is legit. They've got playmakers, a dynamic linebacker, um, and as Chris Kleiman just said on the Big Twelve teleconference. The back end of the defense was really good. Nobody was open all day, which might be a testament to West Virginia's defense or K-State's receivers, but it was a mismatch, wasn't it? Well, I think on the defensive side of the football for West Virginia, the, the thing that just jumped out at me is the athletes that they have everywhere. Um, you know, I mentioned Tony Fields before, before we got rolling. You know, he had 15 tackles, which – is the third time this year he's had double-digit tackles in a game. Uh, he, this guy's a part of the all-name squad in college football. Nick Troy Fortune is uh, a really good cornerback. And, you know, again, K-State had uh, a couple of drops. You know, Malik Knowles is still not at 100%. But, you know, and I'm just speaking for me, there's – there are a couple times where, you know, I just I thought guys needed to kind of toughen up and strap it on another notch. And, you know, K-State had a lot of smaller receivers that they're using in the game. And, um, you know, West Virginia was just – they were the better team. And I don't know, I didn't really sense a lot of – there wasn't a lot of frustration and a lot of, you know, there wasn't any guys chirping at one another, which, which was good. But – the other fact that K State special teams matched up with an equally formidable special teams unit, they just canceled out one another. You know, uh, they K State couldn't get anything going uh, in special teams, be it you know punt return or, or kick return or whatever. And, and you have to credit West Virginia. Um, you know, it's it's funny that West Virginia also has a, a couple of guys that don't put up you know big numbers. But they have a couple of guys that have put big numbers up against K State, and that's their that's been their calling card in their their careers. Um, you know, again, I go back to I think K State's a little beat up. You know, it did not help at all that um, 
that, you know, Kansas State did not have 100% Deuce Vaughn. They also didn't have, you know, their their top wide receivers, not at 100%, and he had to leave the ball game, Bradley Moore. And, and there were some off-the-field things that, you know, I know we're not going to get into, we don't need to get into, but I, I think that had an impact mentally on this football team as well last week. I would agree. Ryan Black, the first thing Chris Kleiman said in the postgame Zoom teleconference was, don't lay this at the feet of Will Howard. Um, and I'm not going to, but he wasn't very sharp. Give me your assessment of Will Howard on Saturday. Um, I mean, not good. I'm trying to think how I could, you know, be, you know, honest about it. I mean, I, I will say that, um, from everything that, you know, we've heard from Chris Kleiman, you know, and then Harry Trotter got on the post game zoom as well. Um, and then Chris Kleiman reiterated again today. And then, like you said, the coach, the coach's teleconference is that, you know, Howard wasn't, wasn't shaken or stirred by it, you know, and RIP to Sean Connery. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think that's a positive. You know, I think it's a good thing that he wasn't uh, that he wasn't showing that he was rattled. I mean, I don't know how much you guys believe that as much as as maybe he really was, and you don't ever want to call someone out publicly. But I mean, he does just seem like in the few interactions that we've had with him, and, and Matt, I'm sure you you've had a lot more direct, close interactions with him than we have because we were doing everything at distance this year. But I mean, he he just seemed like a very cool kid in terms of, and I mean, cool, not like I'm I'm assessing whether he's cool or lame, I mean, cool. Like he's calm. Like he's like, he just doesn't seem uh, like he he's thinking about how big the moment is. And uh, you know, I, uh, but I guess if you want me to give it a letter grade fits, yeah. I mean, D minus. Mm. Mm. I mean, I mean the, it, it, the one touchdown pass takes it away from being a, uh, an F. And I mean, I guess you could say he could have threw, could have thrown two touchdown passes, but but Jackson Dean didn't hold on to the other one. So maybe maybe, maybe it should be C minus. I don't know. Barely passing. Let's put it that way. Okay. Very good. That was a long Black. rambling answer. I apologize. Ah, that's all right. <laughs> Tannehill. Uh, We're used to that. We love that yeah, catfish. I don't know. Well, exactly. Was that was that kind of like I uh, like a hunt for Red October? Like we were kind of, I was hunting for the right answer. Ah, you got there. <laughs> I like that Sean Connery reference right there. You, <laughs> you're, not, you, you're just you're delivering like, today. That's awesome. Uh, our Sean Connery couple, here is uh, Travis Tanner. This, hey, hey, this is a league of extraordinary gentlemen, that's for sure. There we go. We lost control. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A couple, things, hey, a couple things I'd throw in is, or are, you, you have to have, your guys around you have to make plays. Yep. And the offensive line was not very good. Now, West Virginia averaged eight and a half TFLs per game. They didn't hit that, but they were, I think, six or six and a half. But the pick six that shows up on Will Howard's line, Shabaston Taylor was worried about getting lit up, took his eye off the ball, was looking to see where the hit was coming from, doink up in the air, pick six. So that one, to me, that one's not on Will Howard. The only thing that that I think I've expected from Will that I'm not seeing, and it's going to come because of his frame, is when he gets bigger and stronger, there's going to be more zip on the football. There are times where he's a little bit late getting rid of the ball, but there are also some throws that they, they're they not getting there in time because I don't think his arm is as strong as it's going to be down the road. Uh, but, yeah, he's – I haven't seen him get shaken yet. I haven't seen him get stirred yet. It was just he had a bad day at the office and nothing and nothing went right. His completion percentage was 50%. But, again, he's not throwing to a lot of 6-2, guys, and the two that he has didn't make catches. So, it, again, it's going to happen. And like you said, Ryan, K-State's going to see another really good defense this weekend in Oklahoma State. Texas probably opened some eyes. They've got athletes everywhere. They're not as bad as people think. You still got Iowa State to come on the road. I mean, the the Humpty of the bunch that remains is Baylor, and I'm not sure Baylor's a complete Humpty. But case right now, K State is just they're they're kind of in that tenuous position because they're beat up. They they don't have all those playmakers that some of the other teams have, and. 
you know, I don't, I don't think Saturday was a case where the season's in the tank now, but K-State's, how many times have we said this? K-State's margin yep. for error is very, very thin, and that is not going to change the rest of the year. Trav, uh, sticking with Will Howard, uh, look, the running game isn't working. You're a young quarterback. You look down the field. Your receivers aren't getting much separation, um, but you still got to make a play. He made some bad throws into some coverage, but what else is he supposed to do? I mean, nothing was working. He's trying to make something happen. I just kind of felt like he was adrift at sea and not enough, not enough paddles in the boat. They just couldn't get going. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where, kind of like you guys mentioned, I mean, I, I liked, you know, from, from the headspace, from the mental side of things, you know, emotionally, I thought he played, um, you know, relatively decent from that. I mean, he's got to fit it into some tight windows. His guys are not getting open. He has to try to squeeze that ball in there, and that might lead to one or two interceptions per game, and I can I can live with one interception. Because, um, I mean, I felt like, I feel like in general, K-State quarterbacks seem to be very conservative, very protective of the football where you know, at the end of the day, you got to take some chances. You got to let your guys go up and make a play and have some faith in them. So I don't mind the interceptions. It was just kind of, um, cause like you said, he really had no other thing, no, nowhere else to go, nothing else to do. So to me, it comes down to, you know, the offensive line, getting that run game established. If we, if K-State can't get the run game established, like they couldn't against West Virginia, they got no chance on offense with a freshman quarterback. So they were able to do it. Um, you know, the, the first couple times with Will back there and then last week uh, did not go well. So I think it really comes down to getting Deuce started, getting Deuce going, and then that'll open everything up for the pass game because these receivers have just proven, you know, it's week whatever now, six or seven. Week, we're going on week seven now. They've proven to me they're not, they're not good enough to get open um, consistently. So they're going to have to uh, play the numbers game, get, get lots of guys in the box so they can win some matchups on the outside because – Will Howard's going to need some help. He's he, he's good. He's young. He's going to make mistakes, um, but he's got to get some help around him. Matt, you said it. Um, this K State team is good. I mean, it's it's a four and one team in the Big Twelve, and that says a lot right there. But um, it's not a great team. It just isn't. They've got a lot of depth issues that are being really worn out here by injuries and COVID. They found ways to win, which is a sign of a team that is uh, not afraid to you know, bear down and get, get it done. But you said it, not much room for error. They got a little bit exposed at West Virginia, but this is a new week. They come home and they can reinvent themselves and maybe get back to doing some things. And I want to get into Oklahoma state after the break, but um, I just think this is kind of like Arkansas state. You take your loss and you go get ready for the next game. And maybe you get a big win that shocks the world. Yeah. Wait, can, 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 I, can I ask something real quick Fitz? Yeah. Go ahead. What do you guys make of just? And I know, like maybe this is me, and this is some 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 maybe segments of the fan base, and certainly just the media in general. What do you guys think of the whole thing? Where I think everyone in this podcast obviously agrees that that Kleiman's the right guy for the program, but the fact that now he's zero and two against Neil Brown, like, what do you guys? It's just like that's one of those dumb stats, or what do you guys? No, I bet you it sticks with Chris Kleiman. I bet you he feels that. I bet you next year they'll have him circled, but I'll, I'll give Neil Brown credit. Uh, I think when we get to the end of the season, we might be able to say the best two games, the best game Neil Brown played in his first two seasons was against K-State. Yep. Credit to yep. him. And you know what else is going to sit with Chris Kleiman? You know what else is going to sit with Chris Kleiman about? Uh, you know, and again, I included it in my game story. Again, I, again, I don't blame K-State athletics. Running. That was the most lopsided loss of his, his head coaching career. Mm. He'd never lost a game by that many points as head coach. The other thing that stands out is some of the transfers that West Virginia gets. And I think Cape State will down the road because I think when I say transfers, I'm talking, you know, grad transfers or, or even from other power five institutions. But, um, you know, again, to me, it's about recruiting and K-State's recruiting is getting better. There's no doubt about it, but it's got to continue that upward trajectory. And, you know, we've kicked this around multiple times. I think K-State's got to go find dudes on the edge that, that will help Will Howard, Jake Rubley, and even Skylar Thompson if he comes back. Because that's where K-State is, if you want to say average, then say average. They don't have anybody that scares you out on the edge. And that's why way back, if I'm a defensive coordinator 
playing Kansas State. And, and again, Deuce Vaughn's not at 100% now after the KU game. But if I'm a defensive coordinator, I am, I am coming. I am coming hard, and I'm coming the entire 60 minutes because I'm not scared of you on the back end. I'm not worried. To, I may give up a play or two, but it's not like you're probably going to beat me 48-45. Uh, if a team comes in and, and shuts down Deuce Vaughn, then Kansas State is in a pickle. There was no Jacardier right. Uh, Harry Trotter is, is what Harry Trotter is, but there's nothing else. And, and on the other side of the football, remember what, what TJ Smith was doing. I mean, he, you were thinking, okay, here's Mario Smith again. Well, he's hurt out for the year. You didn't have AJ Parker. Um, you know, the Justin Hughes has been pretty quiet at linebacker. Eli Sullivan, I think is playing really well. I think the guys up front are playing really well, but, I, I just it takes me back to the margin for error. If K State's got a couple of guys that aren't playing at that next level, they're they're gonna have a hard time winning some games. And Oklahoma State, I said it last week, I'll say it again. To me, and I know they lost to Texas, that they are the most complete team in the Big Twelve. And I, I'll tell you, I think Texas and West Virginia are right there as well. Uh, I mean, I know everyone has off days, but I'm shocked. I'm shocked that West Virginia team lost to Texas Tech. I, I can't believe it after oh. seeing it Saturday. That was the equivalent of Kansas State against West Virginia last season. How, how did you do yeah. that? I mean, yeah. in hindsight, I can't quite figure it out. Trav, the, Matt said it a couple times now. The margin for error isn't isn't very thick for this team. And I and I tell you what, AJ Parker is the first time this year I thought, boy, they really missed someone because I thought uh, they really missed him as far as his play at Nickelback, but also his leadership on the back end. And I thought West Virginia really picked on some guys pretty severely in this game. But uh, you being the tight end, when Bradley Moore went down, um, when you're so limited with your weapons, that one hurt. I mean, right there, even the psychology of that for Will Howard's got to be like, well, that's one of my that's one of my guys. And he did throw to the other tight ends after that, but – um, it just was one of those games where everything just kept spiraling downward. Yeah, when Bradley went out, um, yeah, I mean, I, for Will, I mean, that, your, your tight end's usually your safety net. He's, uh, you know, he, he's your, not usually your first three, but he's always, you know, a big body in the middle that even if he's covered, you know, you still kind of throw it to him low and away and, and a nice safe throw, and you got a chance for a completion there. So, uh, yeah, losing Bradley hurt, you know, a banged up deuce. Is, you know, those, in my opinion, those are obviously your two. Uh, your top playmakers in the receiving game is, is Briley and Deuce. So losing both of them or Deuce, you know, being banged up and, you know, we needed a wide receiver to step up and, and no one, no one did and no one, no one has. So I, I don't know what you, uh, what you can say as, as a fan or, or, or us in this, you know, if, if their past performance is any allusion to what's going to come in the future, it's like this wide receiver course is not going to do it. So you got to find someone else. You got to find, uh, you know, that offensive staff has to find a way to, you know, out scheme them or do some more creative things. Cause right now without a, without a Briley Moore, you know, the, the other tight end, you know, Leonard's came in and did, did a nice job, but he's not near as dangerous as Briley is in the passing game. So um, yeah, if you're this offensive staff, you have a pretty, they got, they got some pretty, they need some Andy Reed uh, whiteboard lessons. They need to draw up some good stuff because his wide receiver core has been super mm-hmm. disappointing to me. And now that we're banged up on the offensive side of the ball, uh, not a lot of promise and not a lot of hope for, you know, just to, you know, just to put up, 30 points. I mean, that's kind of always my threshold. If you can put up 30 points, this K-State team should win. Um, or I, I don't know. I, I don't foresee – we're facing some pretty good defenses moving forward. Um, you know, I, I don't see 30 points on the schedule, you know, very very often moving forward. Well, I would Vince, they need that. to do what you've been asking Climbing about multiple times. They need to move Keon Mosey to receiver. I think they do. I think they really do. I, I'm I'm not sure where the holdup is. I know the kid probably wants to stay at running back, but I think the team nearly needs him. They need that speed threat on the outside. Run fast, run far, we'll throw ball. You know, I mean they just need that. But I will I will say again, Will Howard is if you set Knowles and Taylor to the side then K-State's quarterback is thrown to a whole bunch of short dudes. And it's okay to have a couple of short dudes that can run really fast, but you have to have that guy 
that you're going to throw it up and you know he's going to go get it. And Kansas State does not have that at this point. No, nope, sure well, I mean, I, I thought Knowles was going to be that guy for sure, but I guess it just seems everybody like did. He's just, um, gosh, I mean, he's he's just made a porcelain, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with him. I know he's banged up, but um, I, injuries don't explain why when you put your hands out, you, you don't catch the ball. I mean, he's had a couple balls that he's simply missed with his hands, and I can't quite put yeah. my finger on how that happens. But he did get the touchdown, the one touchdown for Kansas yeah. State. Yeah. was a nice play to Malik Knowles. Is that a sign for the future? Hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But Kansas State comes out of Morgantown at four and one in the conference, four and two overall. They're still on track. The Wildcats are still on track, uh, and in terms of being in control of their own destiny, Oklahoma State off week, Iowa State, a big stretch here for the Wildcats, and it starts off with Oklahoma State three p.m. on Saturday at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And after this break, we'll get into the Cats and Pokes on the Powercat Insiders Podcast. The Power Cat Podcast will be right back. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. I'm here to tell you about Bolin Branch and how you can discover this new level of softness with their iconic sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% responded that Bolin Branch sheets get softer with every wash. They source the rarest 100% organic cotton for an incredible softness to start. Then they skip the toxins and harsh chemicals for a natural feel unlike anything else, and it all comes together with their signature weave. This special design feels buttery, breathable, and unlocks new levels of softness with every wash, and they stand behind their promise of softness. With their 30-night guarantee, you can wash, style, and sleep in their sheets for an entire month. If during the 30 nights you don't love your sheets or feel them getting softer and softer, you can send them right back. No questions asked. So head to BowlinBranch.com for 15% off your first order with code ODYSSEY. That's B-O-L-L and Branch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Selling a little or a lot? Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow, whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits. Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash odyssey podcast. We now send it back to the PowerCat podcast. Welcome back to the PowerCat Insiders Podcast. Tim Fitzgerald, Matt Walters, Travis Tannehill, and Ryan Black. Your whole crew is on hand to dissect what happened at West Virginia. That was the first segment. And now we look ahead like Chris Kleiman and company to Oklahoma State. Matt, you said it. Maybe the best team in the Big 12 coming to Manhattan on Saturday. But, boy, they screwed it up Saturday. Uh, K-State got whooped at West Virginia. Oklahoma State had Texas beat and let it off the hook. Got into overtime and couldn't win. That one could haunt Oklahoma State because I I think they were on track to maybe make the playoffs. And now you begin to wonder how that will impact them psychologically. Yeah, uh, it was not good for Oklahoma State's chances down the road. And I think that uh, that game shows that that the Big 12 this year is watered down in some respects. There's not that elite team. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm, 
I'm glad K-State played Oklahoma early because Oklahoma is not the Oklahoma we saw a month ago. Uh, you know, K-State schedule for the next month, the final month is going to be is going to be tough. They're going to have back-to-back road games. You know, going to Ames and then going to Baylor before closing at home with Texas in a month. Um, you know, Texas I think has has found a little new life, and I tell you that West Virginia Texas game this weekend is going to be pretty pretty interesting to me. Can can West Virginia put together a, a really good game on the road? They're really good at home, and they're they're not so good on the road, but. You know, I look at Oklahoma State, and are they perfect? No. Do they make some mistakes? Yeah. But when you look at the the hat trick of Sanders, Wallace, and Chuba Hubbard, there is not a better trio in the Big Twelve. And I think I think K State's going to have to double Tylen Wallace all day long. Um, and Chuba Hubbard is is explosive. He's not had a great season. And Spencer Sanders, again, threw for 400 against Texas and, and four touchdowns. So Joe Klanderman and company, they've got their work cut out for them this week. Trav, this, this Oklahoma State offense is something else. they just got something at every level. The quarterback can make plays. they got a big-time running back, and they have a really big-time receiver who is kind of overshadowed at times, but I think he's the best offensive player on the team. Yeah, I mean, offensively, they, you know, like like Matt said, they seem to, you know, it's a tale of two different teams. They they have weapons, and K State doesn't. And K State looks like a like a struggle to move the ball down the field to put points on the board. Um, and Oklahoma State's pretty exciting to watch uh, to watch those guys get the balls in their hands. And you know, like you said, I mean, as much accolades as as, as Howard or as Hubbard, excuse me, Chuba, Chuba Hubbard gets, uh, you know, Wallace might be the best part. And and, and two. You know, Spencer Sanders does a nice job of getting the ball around to all his receivers. Um, you know, they're just a fun offensive office to watch. Any Mike Gundy team is always uh, fun to watch on the offensive side of the ball. And this year they seem to put a decent defense out there as well. Well, Ryan Black, this game looks scary you know, if you're K-State because not only can Oklahoma State put up points, that's a pretty salty defense too for the Pokes. Yeah, you know, because I, I think back on, on last season – uh, this was the only game, you know, where, where, well, outside of Baylor, I guess, where it just seemed like K State was just was physically dominated and just really was never in it from the beginning. Because, and you guys might think this sounds crazy, but my former my former writer Greg Woods, who's now off in Idaho, um, I just because I, I was writing during that game, I forgot the exact number of yards that Chuba ran for last year, but like at the end, it's like I didn't know that he ran for that many yards. It was like the quietest, huge performance I've ever seen for some reason. And um, like I said, I mean, they're, they're every bit as good, if not better, this year, Oklahoma State is. And so this um, – I'm interested to see before kickoff what the final line ends up being in terms of how much Oklahoma State's favored. Because okay. I'm certainly leaning toward picking them right now unless – Something crazy comes out before now on Friday when I've got to make my pick. Last I saw was 10 and a half points. Kansas State is a 10 and a half point underdog at home against Oklahoma State. And Vegas hadn't bought into K State yet. Yep. And they turned out they were exactly right with what happened to West Virginia. Yep. But coming off that loss to Texas, I'm a little bit surprised by the number. And yet, Matt, in defeat, Oklahoma State, they turned the ball over too much. They made some grave errors, including a. a personal foul roughing the punter that's hard to explain late in the game that extended Texas's drive that put them ahead in the fourth quarter but as I watched that game Oklahoma State was the better team you take out the turnovers and I think it's a blowout but you can't but I it's going to be up to K-State now can you force Oklahoma State into turning the ball over to give yourself a chance K-State will have to do the little things they're going to have to find a way to make a play or two on Special teams, uh, in my opinion, and uh, again, how K-State goes about dealing with Tylen Wallace to me is huge. I mean, I, I, I totally agree. I, I think he is the best athlete uh, probably in the Big 12. Now, on the other side of the football, I would probably say Joseph Os- Osai from uh, Texas, and he wasn't 100%, but he still had an impact on that ball game Saturday. Um but that, to me, you know, okay, let's say, and Trav knows this, you want to make it, we all know this, you want to make a team one-dimensional, okay? 
So if that means you're going to stop the run first and you're going to suffocate Chuba Hubbard, how on earth are you going to try and, and deal with Tylen Wallace? I mean, Chad, when you think about defenses, and I say, I, I think K-State's got to double Tylen Wallace all day long. If K-State does that, how does that change things in the secondary? And what does K-State do if they consolidate that much energy and effort into trying to eliminate Tylen Wallace? I mean, it, it just makes it hard. I mean, it's just a you know a game of numbers and, and bodies. If you got two guys on on one wide receiver, next thing you know, Shuba Hubbard's getting you know four to eight yards per pop, uh, just because they're pretty easily able to get a hat on a hat from the offensive side of the ball. So, um, you know, you can you can you know single them up and put a safety over the top. That's probably you know the best uh, kind of playing the the middle happy ground there is just to have that safety cheat over quite a bit and have his eyes uh, cheat with his eyes a little bit, but. Um, you know, that, that's what makes it so difficult when a team can run and a team can pass. And that's why K-State's pretty easy to defend is because they can, you know, they, they got one playmaker and Deuce Vaughn and, and that's about it. They don't have that second third at the wide receiver position. So, um, no, it, it's a tall task. You know, I think your mind and your strategy is in the right spot. Um, you got the right idea. It's just, you know, that's that's really hard to execute just from a, from a body standpoint. And, and this Oklahoma State uh, running game is, is good enough that, you know, they'll just chip, you know, four, six, eight yards per pop, you know, up and down the field. And, and that's uh, not near as exciting, but just as effective from a, to moving the football. Ryan Black, give me your scouting perspective of Oklahoma State quarterback Spencer Sanders. Oh, wow. I mean – like I said, I wish I'd got to, to watch the entire game, you know, against Texas. I think I saw, if I'm not wrong, guys, that was a career high in passing yards for him, 400. And, uh, I mean, the thing about him, and, you know, going into last year's game, I'll admit, I, I did not know really a ton about him. And he impressed me in that game. And I'd say that, you know, not only, uh, you know, when you look at what we just talked about with him being able to throw 400 yards, but I mean, he he can get downfield too with his feet, you know. And I think that's what that's what makes any quarterback even tougher for a defense. You know, it's one thing to have a, a drop back quarterback where you're like, okay, well, if we if we you know uh, read our keys and do what we need to do, you know, hey, we can get pressure on this guy. But like, man, you know, when a guy can 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 get out of the pocket like he can, um, yeah, you know, I think it's going to be it's going to be a challenge for K State. But I'll say this: I mean, hey, they're coming off what the, the best game they've had in tackles for loss in almost four years. And so, you know, Drew Wiley, Wyatt Hubert and Khalid Duke, you know, if, if they can maybe get some pressure on them, that, that would, that would help a lot in terms of maybe going and, and upsetting Oklahoma state Saturday. You're listening to the Powercat insiders podcast sponsored by blue Mark energy. Blue Mark is a natural gas products and services provider serving feed yards, hospitals, hotels, manufacturers, and school districts throughout the Midwest. And Blue Mark Energy is the natural gas provider for the Kansas State campuses in Manhattan and Salina. Blue Mark Energy, K State owned and K State proud. Matt, Ryan just said it. Drew Wiley played his butt off at West Virginia. That, uh, the amount of progress this kid's made between last season and this season is phenomenal. He is a really tough, uh, strong interior defensive lineman now that is very disruptive. Yeah, he's he's been uh, he's been really good, and I think you know Coley Duke played a heck of a game on on Saturday. Uh, K State's going to need that. You know the the it sounds almost comical to say it, but when K State has the opportunity to get Chuba Hubbard to the ground with the first guy that gets there, that guy's got to make the tackle. And if K-State's able to get a second and third hat there, but when when he gets to the edge or he's coming up the middle, you know, if there's got to be a one-on-one -on -one stop made, K-State's got to win the majority of those battles or they're going to have a, a rugged time on on Saturday. And, you know, I – uh, the stoner kid's a good wide receiver and does a lot of you know blue collar work for Oklahoma State, uh, but there it's it's extremely obvious. There's not a whole slew of guys that I think you really have to wipe out. And you know one guy is, is their tight end. He didn't do a lot against Texas, but he's approximately eight feet five and weighs three hundred pounds and runs like the wind. And, and that's a guy that Oklahoma State can turn to as well. The, the Woods kid's impressive to me. So, 
it's just it's an all-around tough matchup. I, I I can see K State being right in the thick of things, and I can also see Oklahoma State putting up a, a ton of yards. It's it's what K State team's going to show up, and how do they, uh, you know, how do they go about their business, and and who makes the fewer overall mistakes. Trevor, this has been a good tackling team, and it wasn't a good tackling team at West Virginia. They're going to have to get back on track there. They just didn't seem to get to the right spot quick enough to be sound in the tackling department last week. Have we got an update on on Parker this week? Do we know injury status? Do we know anything? I don't. Um, I uh, other than what we saw, other than what we heard over the weekend. So yeah, he didn't day, travel. Day he did not travel last weekend, and. Um, I, and I'm just shooting from the hip here. I, w- I would say 50-50. 50-50 kind of day-to-day. I mean, I do think he's such a – I mean, th- those – when a guy like that goes down, I mean, it's like the whole glue just kind of falls apart on the defensive side. And So, I mean, if he can play, I think that, you know, k- gives K-State at least a chance on defense to slow him down a little bit. But if he's um, if he's out – and that defensive back position is so hard to play, you know, 10% banged up, 20% banged up. If you got to – um, you know, if you're a quarter step slower, you get you get exposed pretty quick. So hopefully he's healthy and healthy enough to go because I do think um, you know he just he's the glue to that defense on the back end. Um, and Oklahoma State's going to throw the ball around if he's not if he's not out there. Next topic: Ryan Black. K State's now four and two. That West Virginia game started the second half of the season. So weird to think that, but uh, they're now into the final four games of the regular season for the Wildcats. Four and one in the conference. What are realistic expectations in your book for these Kansas State Wildcats coming down the stretch? Well, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, they they would go zero and four. I, I really don't see them losing to Baylor, but I mean, it's a very realistic possibility they they could go one and three. I think when you're talking about, you know, I mean, if you're a fan, you should say, well, they should go four and zero. Oh three and one at worst, but I think honestly the realistic thing to look at is, is two and two. I, I don't know if that people would say that makes me more of a pessimist. I just think you say, well, Oklahoma state's going to be tough. I would say it's going to be very tough as well. Probably should beat Baylor. And then let's say Texas comes here. They're not playing for a spot in the big 12 title game. It's probably going to be very cold in Manhattan. I, I give the edge to K state in that game, you know? So, I mean, I, I think realistically a two and two finish is is what I, I would expect, but I won't be shocked if K State either goes three and one or one and three either. The only ones that would completely shock me, I guess, is if they win out or lose out. Which uh, either either one one would be amazing. The other one would be uh, uh, pr- pretty. Um, how do I put it? Pretty deflating after because uh, it would mean you ended the regular season on a on a five game losing streak. Right now, it looks like the, the back end of the schedule is back loaded because of those teams, three out of the four are now ranked. Yeah. And if Texas beats West Virginia, and I, then I would say look out. I think Texas is going to – if Texas wins at home against West Virginia this weekend, uh, I think you can say they're on a roll and they're probably going to pick up steam if they would lose that game. I think what Ryan said is right. I mean, you don't expect Texas to come in on December 5th you kind of want it to be about 15 degrees thinking they're not going to want to play. Uh, but Kansas state is Kansas state can just, they've got to worry about themselves. They've done, they've done a lot of good things uh, in, in very trying times. And it's been to this point, it's been a good year, but they, you know, whether they go one and three, two and two, three and one, the rest of the way, I think it'd be really difficult for Kansas state to sweep the last four. Um, but uh, Kansas State just need, they need to keep making progress. And for me, again, it's about the recruiting trail and getting more Jacks and Joes here and doing it the right way. And the, the, the football team, this football team is going to get there. Um, this Saturday is going to be very, very interesting. I just, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with Oklahoma State and, um, you know, they were a different team when Tylen Wallace went out last year, and then Sanders got hurt as well. So they're at full steam, and and it's going to be a knockdown drag out on Saturday. Trav, after Arkansas State, that fiasco, how badly they looked. If you told me they'd win four games in the Big 12, I'll, I would have said, I'll take it. I mean, because I really thought they were looking at a one, two win season. 
as as things progress. But they did turn it around. So I'm not trying to overreact. I'm trying not to overreact to that loss at West Virginia. But the hill does get steeper. And yet I look at this. They won five games in the Big 12 last year, as Ryan Black just so eloquently stated. I think they're better than Baylor. I think Texas is a winnable game if it's cold. Man, if they get six wins, uh, how dare anyone feel as if they fell short of something, right? I mean, they they have really turned the corner and found a way to salvage this season and make progress in the midst of this pandemic. And I only think whatever happens here down the road, one win, two wins, it only bolsters – the progress of this program under Chris Kleiman. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you take, you know, four and one in the conference and four and two overall at this point of the season, you know, I, I'd take that any day of the week and, and you know, August 15th, if you ask me. Uh, but what, what really I think is important to note, too, is like, you know, this coaching staff, it almost seems like, or at least to me, you know, from reading the, seeing the clips and reading the articles, it's like they almost don't even, yes, they want to win, but like they're such a process oriented group. You know, you just you 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 hear no panic, you hear no, um, you know, frustration. You, you know, Coach Kleiman is in as calm as possible, like he's ordering off the Olive Garden menu. It's just like, you know, we got to play better. And it's like, Coach, you just got your butt handed to you. Like, show a little emotion, get a little fired up. Um, and, and he just seems so calm and collective. And you know, it's about the process. As long as we get better tomorrow than we were today, you know, in two, three, four years, we'll be competing for conference championships. And I truly think he believes that. Um, and, and I believe that as well. So it's, you know, what happens towards the tail end of this year? I mean, does it matter? Yes. Um, is it going to define Chris Kleiman and his staff? No, I still think they're going to have uh, a lot of success here at Kansas State. So um, I- I'm with Ryan, you know, probably, you know, I think if you finished out two and two, that, I think that's probably pretty realistic. I-, I could definitely see him going one and three, though. Um, you know, to find three wins there, I think it's going to be tough. So we'll-, we'll see how things play out. But, you know, I just don't see, you know, overall it's offensive firepower has just been uh, dwindling down and down and down as the season's progressed. So I just don't see them outscoring anyone at this point. Uh, but overall, you know, we're playing football this year, so that's a win. And two, you know, we're still 4-1 of the Big 12, so that's fun too. Ryan Black, I was really struck by that today when Chris Klein was talking about it, how thankful he is. They're six games into a season that people didn't think would take place. They're probably going to get in all 10 games. Yep. They're probably going to get in a bowl game. They might still sneak into a Big 12 title game. This is all like a big bonus for a program that, uh, oh, by the way, none of these players are losing eligibility in the process. They'll all gain from this and be back next year as whatever class you want them to be. Well, and I, I want to know, you know, Fitz, if they get to six wins, you know, that's not like a six wins in the typical season where it's like, okay, you finish 500 and then you get to whatever bowl, which usually for K-State always seems to be the Cactus Bowl. But uh, six wins this year means you finish six, you know, 600. You won six out of ten games. And then, you know, we, we obviously know this better than just the outsiders who aren't around the team. But six a six and four season, if that's what it ends up being regular season, it's after losing the entire offensive line from last year, losing Skylar Thompson, you know, pretty early in the season, losing, and I brought up Walter Neal, losing Joshua Youngblood, just leaving in the middle of the year. I mean, overcoming a lot, and then the off-field thing that we're not going to go into, but like just a lot of different things this K-State program from last year when – you know, they, they obviously exceeded expectations then too, but to come back, if they end up getting uh, to six and four to finish this regular season, I think that's a heck of an accomplishment for sure. Matt, bring this thing home. Uh, is Kansas state still realistically in a position to earn itself a spot in that big 12 championship? And do we want that? I mean, I know that sounds great, but then, you, you know, you might get your butt handed to you in that game. For me at this point, it's just about, finding good things in the course of the season. And I guess playing in a Big 12 championship is a really good thing. But then again, I you know, it's a weird year. If K-State were to get to the Big 12 championship, if you're a recruit and K-State got there with a freshman quarterback, how would how could you not want to come play for that coaching staff? I think it's a long shot. I think it's going to be awfully difficult. Uh, I, I'll go back to something I said before the season even started, and that is, to me, this year, wins and losses don't matter. Uh, it does. I mean, I, I get that. But my my take on that is 
everybody has eligibility coming back. They don't lose a year. Uh, this year's really going to be big for the, the underclassmen, especially. And those guys that are maybe a step away from really being a first team contributor or a second team contributor, you know, a guy like Khalid Duke this year is huge, uh, you know, for, for Kansas state, I just, I, I love the, the camaraderie on the coaching staff. Uh, I think, you know, some things that Trav just said are, are, you know, right on about coach Kleiman does not show uh, a lot of, he's not going to show panic. He fights for his kids on the field. He's, he's talking to the officials. He's a good communicator. And, and so are the rest of the guys on his staff. Uh, it's just to me again, they've got to go, they've got to go find those guys that are going to play in the system that want to be here. They've got great facilities. It's a spectacular place to be and the fan base loves them. And, Whatever happens here over the next month is going to happen. And if Kansas State wins six games this year, uh, you know, if they win six Big 12 games, holy smokes. I mean, I, Chris Kleiman, I think he won't win Coach of the Year in the Big 12, but his name should be up there because he will have done it with a true freshman quarterback. Yes, indeed. Kansas State, Oklahoma State, 3 p.m. on Saturday at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Oddly, it's supposed to be a beautiful day, at least as of now. Beautiful week here in Manhattan. We'll see what it looks like, and we'll see what K-State looks like when it takes the field after that loss to West Virginia. Hey, Ryan, did you have a good rant that we can actually put into the podcast, or do you want to rant about things that we can't put in the podcast like you did before we started? Well, I, I mean, my, my only kind of rant was when I was getting people on Twitter telling me that, like, Pulling uh, Will Howard in a, a game that was already lost made it, you know, would would like look like they're waving the red flag, and it would. One guy even said that it would make, uh, you know, it'd be a way to lose your team, and he never specified whether he meant they would lose faith in Will Howard or Chris Kleiman. But I said, how stupid is that? Like, if Will Howard gets hurt in a game where they're down by, you know, that many points. And I, I just couldn't, you know, I, I don't think that's waving a white flag in as much as this. I mean, yes, okay, technically it is, but it's like it's also being smart. There are times that you have to, you know, say that we're losing the battle to win the war, you know, uh, to, to use a war analogy. And it's just, you know, I, I just was shocked that anyone thought it was such a hot take to say, no, we'd rather him stay out there and just see if he can keep trying to, to, to rally the team or this or that. And, and I just thought, no, no, you, you just – and that's also what I point out. I was like, this is not Oklahoma. Th- this defense is way better than Oklahoma. There was no – even if Skylar Thompson had been playing Saturday, I don't think they would have been able to mount a comeback like that. Just because that defense is, is, is just – Oh, they're just light years ahead of, of what Oklahoma had. I and I didn't want to throw in like what I thought would be the key to Saturday's game. Not that you guys asked me, but I'll just throw this out there. This stat. Did you know, when you think about last year's team, guys, how dominant they were in time of possession, number one in the Big 12, top 10 in the country? They've only won it one time this year. That's and that was against Arkansas State. And and part of that is special teams is getting – Yeah, special teams, pick sixes, you know. So yeah. I, But I just think that, you know, as, 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 as they say, you know, Fitz, as obvious as it sounds, I just do think maybe the more that you can keep Oklahoma State's offense off the field, the better maybe K-State's chances of winning Saturday would be. I think if you can keep Oklahoma State's entire team off the field, <laughs> that improves your chances of winning. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but, uh, you know, food poisoning is always an option, and that, yeah. that might help. <laughs> well, this has been the Powercat Insiders Podcast. We appreciate you listening. That was Matt Walters, Travis Tannehill, and Ryan Black. I am Fitz, and make sure you're listening to all the Powercat podcasts that come every day, including the Tannehill and Spiller podcast every Friday at GoPowerCat.com. And tomorrow on the Powercat Sources podcast, our tour of the Kansas State coaching staff continues with K-State defensive tackles coach Mike Tuiasasopo. Powercat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.